Boom, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final session of the lacrosse goalie, virtual lacrosse goalie summit three final session. Who's going to be the first in the chat? I see Michael Adubato, Adubato, Kenzie. Hello. Come on in. Say hello. Hopefully you know me by now. My name's coach Damon Wilson. I am of course the host of this goalie summit. And you know what? This session is just going to be you and me, you and me. There's not going to be a guest. It is just me going live. Fourth session of the day. Got to admit, I'm feeling a little tired, but you know what? I'm going to bring it. We're going to bring it for you guys. I'm feeling pumped. I'm feeling pumped. Say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're coming in from. I see some common names. Avery, Jordan, AJ, Tony, Liam. Is there anybody out there that attended all 16 sessions live? All 16 sessions live? Anybody? Was anybody able to make all 16 live? Actually, I take that back. It wasn't 16. It was just 15 because we had to reschedule the session with Matt DeLuca, and we'll be doing that uh, next week. I'm still waiting to get um, confirmation as the day and the time, but as soon as I have that information, I'll go ahead and uh, send it to you guys. All right. Kaylee says only 14 for me. Not bad. Not bad at all. Ben says, yes, I got to all 15. That is awesome. That's so awesome that you guys are able to attend all of the live sessions and take advantage of it, uh, for free. All right. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today, tonight, Saturday night, uh, is, Lacrosse goalie equipment. All right, lacrosse goalie equipment. I'm going to be going through uh, the the equipment that you need to play goalie. All right, to play field goalie. All right, but before I do that, we got a couple of announcements. Remember, we're doing the giveaways: two Lexi shields and one pack of Swax Lax balls. And anybody who attends this session, as well as the other sessions, that's one entry into the CL18 goalie heads. Okay. I'm going to be doing a, um, a call on Tuesday, Tuesday of this week, which will be a, um, which will be the live drawing for the CL 18 goalie head. So I'll send out that information. I'll do it live, answer some questions if you want. Um, and if there are extra swax lax balls or extra Lexi shields, probably extra Lexi shields. Some people haven't claimed them. Uh, they were the winners and they never emailed me. We'll give away those on the call Tuesday. You do not have to be present to win the CL18 goalie head. You do not have to be present to win the goalie head, but you do need to be present to win those extra giveaways. Uh, and I also have a really special announcement that I'll be letting you guys know about on Tuesday. Uh, so that's going to be awesome. So that'll be Tuesday evening. I think we're going to do, uh, what did I say? Six or seven uh, PM Eastern. Hang on. Let me check. Uh, I just did it. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you at the end of this. Uh, but yeah, some people already won Lexi shields from the last, uh, summit or they won two in this particular one. So those go back into the pot and I'll be giving those away on Tuesday. All right. If you guys, uh, want to get the VIP pass that's still available. All right. So, um, this will be, access to all of these sessions, lifetime access. And a lot of folks tell me, hey, I love revisiting this content or I wasn't able to make this session. Um, like I said, even if you were able to make this session and you want to come back and revisit it before a big game, before next season in the off season, um, the VIP pass is still available until Tuesday. So if you go to pass.goldysummit.com, I'll throw the link into the chat here. You can still grab that VIP pass. And um, we're doing, for those that picked up the elite VIP pass, there's a cool coaching call that we're doing uh, Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern uh, just with that group. And that'll be me. And um, it'll be a normal Zoom call. So we'll get to see everyone, answer questions, do some coaching. That's going to be awesome. That will be Monday. I think that does it for the announcements um, how you guys feeling out there? Last session of the day. Let's bring the heat. Who's excited? Who's excited? Throw it in the chat if you can. 
Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. I got way too much stuff open. Let me, uh, let me close some things here. Sort of scrambling to get everything ready. I think we're all set. All right. Um, it's just going to be me uh, on this session. So I won't be monitor monitoring the chat like I normally do. I won't be monitoring the Q&A box like I normally do, but, but continue to drop your questions in the Q&A box and uh, we'll get to it um, we'll get to it at the end. Okay. Since, uh, since I won't be monitoring it, make sure you put a lot of detail in the, uh, in the question, because if you ask something right in the, in the, um, uh, heart of the moment that makes sense in the moment, but we revisit it 20 minutes later, it might not make sense. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I'm sharing. Uh, can you guys, let me close this chat. Can you guys see the screen? Can you see my screen? Well, actually, I got to bring back the chat now that I just said that. Hang on. Um, how do I do that? Chat. Can you guys see the screen? Okay, you can see it. All right, cool. So let's go full present mode. We got me. We got the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about lacrosse goalie equipment. All right. Um, and really, what's the goal of this presentation? The goal of this presentation is I want to give you an overview of all the required equipment and all the optional equipment for field lacrosse goalies, all right? So that's really what this, what this is all about. And it's really meant for beginners, right? So if you're, if you're a high school goalie or a college goalie that's been playing for years, you probably already know what the equipment is. You might learn a thing or two when I do some recommendations, uh, but odds are you're not gonna learn anything new. So it's really meant for, you know, if there's a parent out there um, who wants to know what equipment do I need or a goalie that wants to know what equipment do I need to get started. That's who this, that's who this presentation is for. Okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, look, let's be honest. Lacrosse equipment in general is expensive. It's very expensive, uh, which sucks, but I'll show you a few tips on, um, how you can make it not as expensive. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk about some buying tips and I'm gonna go through uh, what I know there and give you guys some tips, all right? Um, next comment is, I'm gonna make some recommendations for lacrosse goalie gear. I obviously have not um, tried every single piece of equipment. I've tried a lot of stuff, uh, which is great. And, and I've talked to a lot of goalies and worked with a lot of goalies who have tried a lot of stuff, but I haven't tried everything. So I. If you recommend a random piece of gear, or if you want to know my opinion on a random piece of gear, um, odds are I haven't tried it. But just because I recommend one particular piece of gear, it doesn't mean that there are not great alternatives, right? So if I recommend this head or I recommend this helmet, look, there's a lot of great alternatives. And even um, what's interesting is a lot of goalies have different body types. So one chest pad that works for one goalie, uh, they might put that on and say, no, that one's horrible. I didn't like it. Or one, um, you know, helmet that I recommend some goalie might say, no, that one's bad. I got a concussion in that one. And another goalie might say, no, that that's the best piece of gear I've ever had. All right. So that's my, my little spiel on, uh, the recommendations there. Uh, it's interesting to see the evolution of lacrosse goalie equipment. So I think that's Tom Sears back in the eighties. Uh, you got the mesh Jersey, you got the bucket helmet, you got the little um, like flip-flop type chest protector, just a dangling piece of foam. Um, look at look at those look at those goldie gloves, uh, or not even goldie gloves. Just look at those regular field player gloves. And then you got Blaze Reardon uh, now in the PLL with the chaos, and you can kind of see. Oops, you can see you know how the helmets evolved, how the stick has evolved, how the goldie pads, uh, how the goldie gloves have evolved. Really, really cool to see. Okay. Um, this is going to be for field goalies. So if you just joined me in that session that we just had with Dallas Eliuk, he was a box goalie. I'm not talking about box goalie equipment. Those guys are aliens. It's a whole other beast, right? They wear big bulky pads. We're talking about field goalies and the equipment that you need for a field goalie. Okay. Uh, so let's get into the required goalie gear. So you absolutely have to, um, you have to wear this gear. And um, in some levels, you know, like youth, there's some other uh, gear that I have in the optional section and I'll, and I'll call it out and say, this is an optional piece of gear for everybody, but youth or women, high school and under must by rule wear this gear. 
Uh, and it starts with the helmet. Starts with the helmet. So um, I'm not going to be able to see the chat, but I would love to see what helmet you guys use. Uh, what helmet are you using right now? Uh, the latest and greatest are these helmets that I've put here. Really, the Cascade S is the latest version of the Cascade. And um, I've heard pretty good reviews about its uh, protectiveness. I've also heard some goalies get injured with that. Uh, but that is going to be definitely the best looking, if you ask me. The Cascade XS looks very, very sweet, um, and it's pretty light as well. Some goalies get their helmet provided by their team, in which case, yeah, you're just going to use that helmet. But other goalies, um, you know, if you play on a club team, uh, you'll need to get your own helmet. And um, each below each uh, piece of gear, I've set up quick links. So if you go to laxgoaliewrap.com slash cascade S, that'll take you to a spot to buy this helmet. All right. Um, those are affiliate links. So if you do end up buying, I get a small percentage to which I say, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but those are some helmets that we're going to use. The R is the version of the cascade right before the S. Uh, and that is a great option as well, because um, it has a lot of the characteristics as the S, but you know, once you go into the latest and greatest, it gets a little bit more expensive, okay? Uh, again, I, I'm not going to be monitoring the chat, so I'm just going to assume you guys put in um, Cascade R and Cascade S. Maybe I'll jump over to the chat every once in a while just to make sure um, you guys can still hear me. <laughs> uh, one helmet that um, I want to call out is one that's been recommended to me by a couple different uh folks, which is the Cascade Pro. It's an older helmet, but it's definitely got a lot of protection. So if you are uh, you know, really interested in getting protected, this is an option to look into. It's also very cheap because it is an older helmet, uh, but it still looks very cool in my opinion, and it protects amazingly. And then you see this little screw right here. That's where you're going to uh, plug in your Lexi Shield. So that's, you know, we're doing the drawings for the Lexi Shield. You're going to plug that in there. Um, and it kind of protects the crown of your helmet. All right, anybody use the Pro, the Pro 7? Uh, put that in the chat. So that is the first thing is your lacrosse helmet. A couple notes on helmets. There's no difference between male uh, and female helmets when it comes to goalies. Really, we're just looking for the fit. The fit is very important, right? For the most part, women have smaller heads and are, you know, are a little smaller. So just make sure it... Um, it fits. It shouldn't rattle around because if it rattles around and you get hit, then that helmet's going to hit into your head. That's not what we want. We want a very uh, tight fit and you might have to play with the size to, uh, to figure that out. Some of the helmets um, have like a little air set up. Like I have a shut. I won Adam Gittleman's old helmet in a giveaway, which is awesome. Um, I don't, I don't have it here with me right now. Uh, but that one has is a shut and it has like a little air system where you can kind of pump it up to uh, ensure you get that final fit. All right. Uh, no difference between the male field player helmets and, and goalie helmets. There is no lacrosse goalie helmet, which is a shame. Um, you look at ice hockey style helmets and those are really more protective, but they're not allowed um, for lacrosse goalies, unfortunately. So there's no... There's no Goldie helmet. The, the field player helmets are exactly the same as, um, as, as what we wear. Uh, I mentioned the third bullet point already, which is fit is very important. And the final point is, um, you know, the field of visions through the first, the first bar. Sometimes you see youngsters have their, their helmet. It's, it's like not angled properly. Um, and they're looking through the second bar, sometimes called second bar syndrome, SBS. I don't know if anybody's ever suffered from SBS, uh, but it is real. So with your youth goalie, just make sure that you're, you adjust, you know, those straps so that they see through the first bar. Not so much, it's not so down tilted that I can't see. I still have great vision, but my field of vision is through that, through that first bar. Okay. The next thing we need is a throat guard. All right. The throat guard is going to attach to the helmet. It is required and it, and it um, hangs down and protects our throat, all right? We're, I'll talk about the chest pad next, but the chest pad's really going to come up here, you know, to about your, your collarbone. And so we really need something that hangs down and um, 
protects our throat. And they're, you know, all the Cascade STX Warrior, they all make a very solid option. I don't know if I'd recommend one over the other. Uh, they're all great if you ask me. There's two ways to attach that throat guard to your helmet. Actually, there's the helmet that I won on the left there, um, which is awesome. That's Adam Gittleman's old helmet. Um, and I won that in the giveaway, which, is, which was so cool. Uh, anyway, two ways to attach the lacrosse helmet throat guard. One is by drilling holes into the side of the helmet and then screwing it in on either side. That's what you see on the left there. The other option is to, whoop, what happened? The other option is to attach it with zip, zip ties or string, okay? Um, and there's pros and cons to, to each. With the, with the screw method, obviously it's a little more difficult because you got to screw things in there, um, but it's more uh, stable. So like when you're running around, it stays in place, okay? With the, with the zip tie, easier to install, but you are going to get a little bit of dangle. And for some goalies, when you're running out of the cage, that... Um, you know, that, that bothers them. But it, with the zip ties, you can also hang it down a little bit further uh, as well. So um, two ways to attach the throat guard. And uh, there is no rule that says you cannot decorate your throat guard. So as you see, this young goalie has made his uh, a brick wall. Pretty fitting. Pretty fitting if you ask me, all right? Um, next is the chest pad. And in the year 2021 chest protector, they just passed this new rule that says the chest pad needs to be NOC NOXA certified, okay? So um, they've, they've uh, said that you need to have a reinforced chest plate to protect this thing called Camotia cordis, which is just this very rare, uh, but also very, you know, uh, potentially deadly thing where you get hit in the chest at the, at the exact wrong moment and it stops your heart. And obviously we don't want that um, so the chest pads have a re um, you know, the, over the heart, they have a, another chest plate and then they need to be certified. Okay. From my understanding, referees are not going to be lifting up jerseys and checking for the certification. That's my understanding. It is the players and coaches responsibility to use legal gear. All right. So some people have asked me that I saw a webinar with, um, Maddie Palum, a goalie. Anybody know, uh, anybody know Maddie Palum? Um, I had him on my podcast. He's an old Syracuse goalie. And um, I was watching his webinar. He's also a ref in the PLL and top division one NCAA games. And he said, yeah, I'm not going to be lifting up jerseys and checking. It is players and coaches responsibilities to make sure you're using legal gear. Uh, so as a result, there's actually only five certified chess pads at the moment. I imagine some companies are still working on the chess pad, uh, but here are the two options I recommend. <clears throat> One is the latest by STX. It's called the STX Shield 600. And then I've also heard really great things about the Warrior uh, Nemesis Pro. One of them being, it does have a little bit of a, um, you know, like a cutout right here. So the goalies have a little bit more arm room, a little bit more flexibility, and um, it contours really nicely to, to the chest. All right, so those are two options right there. Here are the other three chest pads that are now currently certified. Uh, the Maverick Max EKG, the Shield 200 and the Shield 400. Uh, and those are actually good youth chest protectors as well, the Shield 200 and 400, um, especially because they have the little, you know, <clears throat> the little wings, the little shoulder wings on the side. And that can give you a little more protection because um, this was one of the worst spots, if you ask me to get hit, is the shoulder. That would stay with you for like a week, a week and a half um, it wouldn't create those awesome leg bruises that you see um, that, you, that, that all the goalies on this call probably already know about, uh, but it would just stick with you and hurt for, for a long time. So actually, when I played on my old chest pad, I did have these little shoulder things and I didn't find them to be all that um, uncomfortable, but they are removable. So if you want to take them off, you can, right? Uh, let me jump over to the chat and, and just make sure we're doing okay. Uh, while I have a sip of water. Uh, yeah, a lot of people are commenting on on what they use and, and saying, you know, this one's not working, wouldn't fit my daughter. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, there's, um, 
especially with chess pads, you know, if you, if you live by a lacrosse store, what I'd recommend is going in there and just trying them all on. If you can, if you're in a hotbed of lacrosse and there's a store there, um, or, you know, when you order online, a lot of companies are really good with their return policy. So that's the beauty of, of ordering new. All right. I'm going to talk about ordering used gear at the end of this, but it's really tough to return used gear. So you're kind of stuck with it. Um, so I would recommend, you know, trying them all on and uh, seeing what fits to your body, what feels comfortable um, for you. All right. But that's the second piece of gear that you need is the chest pad. Next, you need uh, lacrosse goalie gloves. And uh, when I started playing, so I played in the year, uh, well, I got to Cal in 1999 and graduated 2003. But around the year, I think it was my, my junior year, maybe my sophomore year, they actually came out with lacrosse goalie gloves. So before that, we would just use the exact same gloves as a player. And um, in, your, in your lacrosse goalie stance, you know, when you set up with your top hand right here, you can kind of see like your thumb is really exposed. And as you go to make a save, oftentimes, you know, you're very um, at high risk to have your thumb hit. And um, who was it? It was Rodney Ruhlman talked about how he has plates in his thumb and it's all totally shattered from taking a shot. So many goalies have that exact same story. And so what the uh, lacrosse companies start doing is making goalie gloves. And the goalie gloves are going to have a reinforced thumb. So, you know, that isn't to say that injury, thumb injuries go away. I, I still know goalies who have gotten injured with lacrosse goalie gloves, you know, the beefed up thumb, which is, which is a, a darn shame. If you ask me, um, it's, you know, we know the ball's coming at us. So the fact that we can still get broken thumbs and we can still get concussions, it just, it's just mind boggling to me, but this is what we're working with at the moment. So, uh, these are the two that I really like the shield 500, and the Maverick Max. I don't know if anybody uses these. Um, I have a pair of Maverick Maxes that I've used. The nice thing with the newer lacrosse goalie gloves is they're pretty much broken in right from the get-go. I remember gloves that I had at the beginning that you'd get them and they were so stiff and you'd have to play with them and um, you know get them sweaty and get them wet and break them in. These are, these are really nice. They have, um, what's it called? Not leather, suede palms. Um, so they're really comfortable. Um, I don't know if anybody has experience with either of those gloves, but like I said, they've got, you know, this special thumb technology so that <clears throat> when your thumb is in there, it can bend forward, but it cannot bend back. Like you cannot do it. That's what those reinforced thumbs are all about. Okay. Um, so that is another piece. Um, technically you don't, by rule, you don't have to wear goalie gloves. You just need to wear gloves. Right. But um, I don't see any reason why you should be wearing just normal field gloves. I think it's lacrosse goldie gloves with the reinforced thumb all the way, okay? Uh, next up is the jock. Maybe the most important piece of gear? I don't know. <laughs> uh, so what, uh, what jock do you guys use? Here are three options that are really good. Um, I, I would not recommend using just that normal bikey jock. Is it bike or bikey? I, I don't never, I never know. Uh, but that normal jock that you've seen, right? Because even if you get hit square in that cup, it's still like a lot of boom, force to the groin and it still hurts. Um, and so as a result, the Nutty Buddy is really good. The Nutty Buddy, what it does is when you get hit, it kind of disperses the force outwards and you really don't, you don't even feel it. In fact, if you go to their website, the owner of the company takes a 95 mile an hour fastball right to the, right to the junk. And um, you know what? That's good enough for me. <laughs> uh, so you got the Nutty Buddy. And then you've got like ice hockey goalie style cups, which are just way more beefed up, right? Way more, way more intense um, and, and provide a little bit of groin protection um, above. So we're going to need a jock. All right. What jock do you guys use? Put that in the chat. I would love to hear. And again, you got, you got those links right there. So um, I'll send this presentation out afterwards and you can um you can check it out um and just go there it'll take you right to a spot to buy um to buy this gear all right a uh, couple other tips when it comes to the jock i would always throw an extra cheap one in your bag um 
just one of those cheap bikies, like an emergency cup. I kept one in my bag and I got to tell you, I used it on a handful of occasions when, you know, you're packing up your gear and the, your normal cup just doesn't make it into your bag, which is a horrible feeling. But if you have an extra one, um, that will save you. The other thing that will save you is, is what's called the goalie cup rule. Um, and I'll explain to you what it is. It's definitely not an official rule, but as goalies, we can enact the goalie cup rule. And the goalie cup rule says, if the goalie forgets his cup, he can steal anybody else's for that day. That's the goalie cup rule. Very simple. So if you forget yours, never go uh, into goal without playing. Uh, ne sorry, never jump into the crease without a cup. Um, but just enact the goalie cup rule. Hey, goalie cup rule, I need your cup. Boom, there you go. Might be the most important thing you ever learn. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about the lacrosse goalie stick. Lacrosse goalie stick, all right? And when we talk about the stick, it really breaks down into three components. Three components. You got the shaft, you've got the head, and then you've got the mesh. And um, anybody that attended that session with Mr. Wonderful got to see, you know, live him stringing up a goalie head with mesh. But those are the three components um, of the head, okay? Um, probably the most popular head nowadays, and really the one I recommend at all levels, is the STX Eclipse 2, all right? That's the one I have here. Um, really, what we're looking for with the X, with any sort of goalie head is uh, we want stiffness. We want a, a, like a level of stiffness because as you get into the higher levels, you'll see it uh, like goalies will take a shot and it will hit the side and just like bend backwards. And that is the worst, right? That is the worst. So we do want a good level of stiffness, but we also want to balance that with weight. Um, a super heavy goalie head, um, some people don't like. So there are heavier heads such as the Shield, the STX Shield. Um, the CL18 is, is a heavier head, very stiff, but heavier head. So some people like the heaviness <clears throat> and what they get with that is the stiffness, all right? Um, so there are a couple goalie heads. A lot, of, a lot of companies are coming out with goalie heads right now, which is awesome. Just more choices in the market. And you can see Nike came out with the head. I know East Coast Dyes is working on a head, which is really awesome. String King just came out with the head. And I know Blaze Reardon uses that one and talks you know, very highly of it. Um, so that's really the first piece. But if you're brand new, um, you know, it's, it's really weird that I would recommend the STX Eclipse 2 for a nine-year-old and for a, and for Blaze Reardon and for a pro, but it really is very versatile, very light, very stiff. I think it's a great, it's a great goalie head. Um, I'm curious what one you guys use. And again, there's going to be preferences with goldie heads as well. So just because I like the STX Eclipse 2, someone might not like that. All right, let me jump over to the chat. I'm going to see, um, I'm going to take a sip of water. And um, yeah, the one I don't have on here is the Nemesis 3, which is, which is uh, what folks use, use as well. Um, I don't have the Eclipse original on here. This is an Eclipse original uh, right here. Hang on a second. This right here is an Eclipse original. And um, one of the things that people didn't like about it is it has a really wide throat. So if you're that type of goalie that likes to set up with their top hand gripping the plastic, I always set up with my top hand like touching the plastic. So I'm like right here on the bottom. But if you like to grip the plastic, then um, this, is, this is tough. It's really uncomfortable because it's so wide. Same thing with the CL18. And I told Coach Sash that, and I think they're gonna make the, um, they're gonna make that change. Um, you can see with the STX Eclipse 2, it has like a more aerodynamic, grippable throat. So you can set up with your top hand right there and, and, still, and still do really well, all right? All right, I'm gonna put those down, close the chat. All right, um, I see you folks throwing questions in the Q&A box, thank you. We'll, we'll get to those at the end. And um, here's the CL18. Uh, it is, and in fact, these are the very two heads that we're giving away. So it's, it's uh, the superhero design. They're super awesome. 
Um, you can see the different sh uh, face shape of them. They're a little bit on the heavier side because they're so stiff. Um, and, you know, but, but I know for youth goalies, they can be very good because um, the channel right there allows you to cradle and throw a lot easier. But anyway, those are the literally the two heads that were given away um, on Tuesday. On Tuesday. So if you guys show up on Tuesday, well, actually, you don't have to be live to win, uh, but you have a chance to win uh, those goalie heads. Okay, next is the mesh. And, um, you know, I asked Mr. Wonderful, Tommy, uh, hey, what's like the best mesh? And, you know, really his answer was all of these companies are putting out great products. You know, nowadays the mesh, it breaks in really easily, it's very durable. Before, you know, when I played, it was not. It was very hard. It was like a tennis racket when you first, um, when you first got it. When you first got it strung, it was like a tennis racket because the ball would hit it and just pop out until until it was broken in. So you had to just constantly pound it and maybe even use shaving cream to soften up those 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 fibers. Uh, but now, you know, all of these companies, East Coast Dyes, String King, Mesh Dynasty, they're all putting out great mesh products. So I really don't think you can go wrong when it comes to the mesh, but I'm curious, what's your guys, what's your guys favorite mesh? Uh, throw that, throw that in the chat. When it comes to mesh, you have different um, sizes, right? Diamonds. And uh, the way that they're named is for the number of diamonds uh, across. So 12 diamond mesh is going to have a row with 12 diamonds, a row with 11, a row with 12, a row with 11. Uh, same thing, 14 diamond mesh is gonna alternate 14 to 13, 14 to 13. And those are really the meshes that are used nowadays is 12 and 14, okay? You don't see much 17 diamond mesh because in order to really get a pocket, you need to do this open sidewall stringing, which is what I have in this, in this head right here. This is an older head, but you can see it's got open sidewalls, meaning um, you know the, the, the mesh is not strung tightly to the sidewall. There's a string there uh, and you really need that to get, to get the pocket. And you can see this pocket is pretty crappy. It's like kind of collapsed, it's super old. Uh, so you don't see a lot of 17 diamond mesh. There also used to be 20 diamond mesh. Um, you don't see that really anymore. In fact, that's like a dinosaur, Tommy. Tommy said, when you get your hands on a piece of 20 diamond mesh, it was like, you know, discovering a Pokemon or something like that. Um, so what's the difference? You know, really the 12 diamond mesh, it's less like fabric, right? Less material. And so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit lighter um, than the 14, but the 14 is going to be a little more grippy. Um, so yeah, that's Mesh Dynasty's 14 diamond. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, this is, East, this is the same head as before. So it's the East Coast Eyes Hero. Um, semi-soft. They have semi-soft, semi-hard. The semi-soft tends to be um, a little bit, uh, well, it's a little bit softer, breaks in a little bit easier, um, a little bit more tricky to string because it's softer um, than the semi-hard. So if you are stringing your own head, keep that in mind. All right. So for the most part, if you're, if you're brand new, I would just recommend going with the 12 diamond mesh uh, it's the most common. It is uh, easiest to find, easiest to string up. Um, just, just go with that. Uh, but I'm curious what mesh you guys use. Throw that in the chat if you would. What, what size diamonds? Anybody got a 20 diamond head? Love to see it. Would love to see it. Uh, by the way, does anyone know the name of that goalie head on the far right there? Anybody know the name of that goalie head? Yeah, it's the Maverick base. Maverick base. Tracy got it. All right. Um, let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about shooters. So um, you do need. You can see when we talk about shooters, that's this. You know, this lace right here. All right, this lace right here. Uh, you do need them in the head. They're going to help form that channel. And um, when we talk about when we talk about channel, let me, let me show you what I mean, kind of pound this one out a little bit. So what we mean when we talk about the channel is, you know, you can see how like this forms a channel, right? And um, when you cradle, the ball's gonna be in that channel. When you throw, 
we got to make sure the ball's in that channel, right? Because if the ball's like on the side here and you go to throw, it's not going to have a clean release. So we really want that channel. And guys like, like Tommy can, can string up these sticks that have these beautiful channels in them. But part of that is, um, you know, with the, the, the shooters. And they also make the top of this, of this mesh right here a lot more um, rigid. So when the ball is traveling up, then it catches on these shooters or at least has some friction there and then releases. All right, so shooters are um, super important. If the, if the stick is strung really well, you'll see some people go without them, but obviously as a youth, that's not, not what I recommend. There's different designs that you can have with the shooters. Um, there's V's or U's, which you see on the left there, which kind of curve around and help um, form that pocket. And I really think that uh, those are the way to go. I'd be curious what your guys' thoughts are. I've seen a slow motion replay of Jack King Cannon making this save in the PLL, and it's like super slow-mo. It's awesome. And the ball hits him in the mesh and then starts traveling up the mesh. And you can see the, 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 the V, like grab it, like grip it. Um, so I really think that, that Vs or Us are the way to go. Um, but straight across is another option. That's what I have in this head right here, two straight across. And you can also use a nylon. So these are like hockey laces um, for shooters, but you can also see in the middle there, you got one nylon. So that will just add some additional tension um, to, to grip, all right? Uh, a lot of times people say, if my stick is you know, throwing into the ground or it's throwing high, like throwing up or throwing down, what do I do? And a lot of that has to do with the tension of these shooters. So if it's too tight, it's gonna grip too much and pull the ball down and then same idea if it's too loose, okay? Um, so that is the shooters. What do you guys have in your stick? Use V's, nylons, uh, let, let me know about that one, all right? Okay. Um, so lacrosse mesh tips, I would be very careful with the factory strung stick. That means, you know, there's, there's factory manufacturers like um, uh, Lacrosse Monkey, Lax.com. Um, and if you order a full, fully strung stick, it's really a gamble. I've seen uh, some of them come out nice, but I've also heard horror stories of, you know, pockets that were just really bad, really poorly strung. And that's a shame because, you know, if you're, you have a goalie that's just starting out and they can't throw um, and they hate playing with that stick, they're not going to have a good experience. So, I'd be curious, has anyone gotten a factory strung stick that had a really good string job? Let me know in the chat. I'd be really careful with that. The, the, the better bet, if you ask me, is to find somebody on Instagram like Mr. Wonderful. Uh, there's a couple other stick stringers out there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug him because he presented uh, in this summit, great session. He strung up ahead live. Uh, so you could check him out, contact him on Instagram, ship him the head and the mesh and he'll string it up for you and, um, and ship it back. Okay. All right. Uh, next is a goalie shaft. Um, here's a couple recommendations. Really what I'm looking for in a shaft is something that's durable and light, durable and light. To me, I want my, I want this whole setup, my stick to be as light as possible. Cause I felt that gave me a lot of, uh, hand quickness and allowed me to get my hands to the ball a lot quicker. Okay. So, there's a lot of shafts out there. I haven't tried them all. Um, you know, you're just going to have to find what works with you in terms of weight and also balance, right? Like you don't want a heavy head with a super light shaft because it's so top heavy. It's not going to feel really comfortable in your hands. I'm looking for something as a whole stick that feels really comfortable. So those are two that um, I've used the, the metal two really like that one. Um, and the carbon pro has been recommended to me by uh, a bunch of, a bunch of people. Uh, let's talk about shaft length, okay? So back in the day, uh, goalies used to play with a really long shaft. You don't see that anymore. Um, I don't know why they played with such a long shaft. I really don't. You, there's really, like, all of these companies make three lengths of shafts. They make an attack length, they make a goalie length, and then they make a long hole. Um, and really, if you ask me, like, for goalies, we should be in somewhere in between, or we should be from attack to goalie. I know some people like the goalie length because that little longer uh, 
um, that length in the shaft allows you to outlet a lot easier, like more torque on your outlets to throw further outlets. And then you can also reach to pick off passes. So those are the benefits of the Goldie length. Uh, but the attack length is just so gosh darn light. It's so light. Um, and in college, that's what I played with. I played with an attack shaft. And you could you see pros now, uh, Jack and Cannon uses an attack shaft. Like a lot of pros just use an attack shaft because uh, it's so light. Again, you don't get the reach, right? And, and for some youth goalies, it might be a little trickier to throw those long outlet passes. Um, but what you get is, uh, is, is quickness, all right? If you wanna know what length I should use, obviously you can't add length once you cut it down, <laughs> right? So get, get the longer one, cut it off an inch, see what, and, and until you get to the spot that you like. But remember, once you cut, once you cut a shaft down, uh, you can't glue it back together. Um, so my, my recommendation there is cut off a little bit until you get um, to the length and the weight that, that you really like. Uh, what are you guys, attack or goldie length or something else? Uh, throw that in the chat if you could. Um, let's see what we got going on. Attack, attack, a lot of attack. Yeah. Goalie. All right, cool. All right, so we got both. We got both there. Cool. All right, um, the next thing you need are uh, cleats. Cleats. I don't really have a recommendation. I just know that I, I preferred high tops. Uh, they give you a little bit of additional padding on the um, on the ankle. Um, and then you know I don't want something that's like super lightweight because we take shots to the feet, right? And ideally, there's some sort of lacrosse goalie cleat that gave us additional protection. It just it doesn't exist. Um, there's a lot. There's a, sort of a need for us lacrosse goalies. Um, in that space. So I don't want something that's like super light. That's like laces on the side. Cause I could take a shot there and I want at least a little bit of, of padding, a little bit of fabric that the cleat provides. All right. If you play on turf, you could also get turf shoes. I've seen people use, um, you know, the regular cleats on the Astro turf. Um, I, when we played our um, home games at Cal, uh, it was an Astro turf field and it was like the really old, neon green like super worn down to the wires and the cleats just didn't work that well so i did i wore the turf cleats uh the turf shoes on that one all right um, but cleats are something that you're going to need and then you're going to need a mouthpiece that's required by rule that every goalie has a mouthpiece and um what i recommend here is if you can afford it go to the dentist and get a custom custom made mouthpiece that is um, not white or clear. So by rule, it needs to be colored or black um, so you can see it. Um, but if you do that, it allows you to talk because I know sometimes goalies hate wearing mouthpieces because they can't talk. And talking and communicating with our defense is so important, right? So important as a lacrosse goalie. So you really need a good fitting mouthpiece. And if you go to the dentist and get, and get one made for you, it also doubles as a night guard. Um, so I grind, I grind my teeth quite a bit and I wear that as a night guard. Um, so tackle two birds with one mouthpiece right there. Um, anyway, you have these ones that you like put in water and then kind of mold to your or hot water <clears throat> and mold to your, um, mold to your bite, but you do need a mouthpiece. All right. And that's really, uh, when we think about, you know, the required gear, um, you know, especially in the men's in the men's game, I want to talk about some of the some of the pieces of optional gear are actually required at the women's level, um, and the rules are always changing. So if I say something that's not required, I bet there's somebody out there listening to this that knows better than I. Let me know. Uh, there's our man Kyle Burnlor. Anybody attend his session? It was an awesome session. Tons of uh, drills that he does in his clinic. Um, so that was awesome. And you can got, you see, he's got the STX. Uh, well, he's sponsored by STX. So he's really got all the STX stuff, the shield 500 gloves, uh, chest protector, clips two, um, et cetera. All right. Um, let me jump over here to the chat. Actually, let's take a, take a, how are we doing on time? 40. Wow. Time flies. Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I want to make sure I get through all of this. All right. Um, so now when we talk about optional gear, um, 
this you, you can wear it, you can't wear it. I'm going to make recommendations along the way as to what you should and should not wear. Uh, the first one is sweats. And um, I like to wear sweats because, you know, a thick pair of baggy sweats, right? Thick and baggy. Thick, what it did was, you know, gave me a little bit of extra cushion to take some of the sting out of shots. And baggy because, um, guess what? That will that will give you one or two additional saves per year. It really will, and why not? Um, there's John Galloway on the left in his sweats. There are there is um, actually forget who what goalie that is for Duke. Um, but sometimes you'll see lacrosse goalies pull up the uh, pant legs, and to me that that is like, hey, I'm not wearing shin guards, right? That's that's the styles that you've seen there. Uh, but John Galloway said underneath those sweats. You know, he's wearing pads, maybe not in games, but definitely in practice. So sweats are also a great option. You know, if you want to wear the additional leg padding, throw a pair of sweats over that. And, and you're, but you're, you know, worried about people, throw, worried about people saying something, throw a pair of sweats over it. Um, all good. All right. That's the first one. Sweats. Uh, shin guards. So as for my understanding, these are required at women high school and below. Listen, there's no other way to say this. Getting hit in the shins sucks. It sucks, all right? Um, every pro that I've talked to, you know, feels the same way. Every college goalie feels the same way. Yeah, you get used to it, but if you're having a great session and you take one off the shins, it's just like you don't want to be there anymore, right? So there's no reason why you shouldn't be wearing shin guards in practice. They don't um, block a moving joint, so you're not going to lose any speed or mobility, uh, but you are going to, you know, save your shins. Trevor Tierney's had four surgeries on his shins. That is insane. Um, so there's two good options there. I, to me, the, I don't think the lacrosse companies have really nailed the shin guards just yet. So I don't, I tend not to recommend those ones. Um, I tend to recommend just soccer shin guards or there's these G form shin guards, uh, which a lot of goalies use. They're kind of like, um, you know, a little more comfortable sleeves that you would wear on your shins. Okay. Um, so I do recommend all goalies wear shin guards, especially if you're starting out. It, listen, if you don't want to wear them in the games, uh, no problem. But definitely in practice, when you're taking so much volume, um, you should have them on. Uh, the next thing is lacrosse goalie pants. And again, from my understanding, these are required women high school and below. Um, and these are going to be pants that <clears throat> protect your thighs, right? A little bit your hips too. Um, you got the STX goalie pants there, but what I really like is just football pants, uh, football pants, right? Um, I mean, those football players are fast, right? They're agile and they, they all wear football pants. And so football pants is going to give you a little bit of knee protection, going to give you a little thigh protection. And um, does anybody recognize that goalie right there? Anybody recognize that goalie? Who is that? Right. It's John Galloway, one of the best goalies, like if not ever, um, you know, certainly at Syracuse wearing football pants um, in a game. And so some of the, you know, if you think oh, none of the top goalies wear, wear these padding, <clears throat> it's not true. It's not true. So throw on those football pants. And then, like I said, if you want to, in the game, if you want to just wear regular stuff, fine. But, you know, if you're going to be doing, you're going to be taking a lot of shots, uh, those bruises really add up um, and they hurt and you get used to it. Don't get me wrong, but um you know, I, as a goalie coach, recommend kids get padded up. I really do. Um, knee pads too. If so, if you want to throw on a pair of knee pads or, or keep like a, a lightweight pair of knee pads in your, in your bag. And if you take one off the knee, then maybe you throw a pair of knee pads on there. Um, again, nothing bulky that's going to restrict the, the movement, uh, but just something to protect that kneecap because getting hit right in the kneecap uh, is pretty gosh darn painful. Um, I've seen some goalies wear arm pads. This is the one piece of gear that I'm okay with goalies not wearing. I think, I think the arm pads do really impact your ability to, to bend your arms. And I don't, I don't know if I ever got hit like, you know, on the arm. It's, it's just the way that you maybe once or twice, but it, it's just kind of a glancing blow, but the way that you set up as a goalie, you know, your, your elbows are really like behind the stick and really the arm pads protect the elbows more than anything, right? If we, if we were going to wear some sort of arm pads, it would need to be like on the front right here. So I'm okay with goalies not wearing arm pads, but 
Um, I know at the youth level, I don't know if they're required or not, but at the youth level, um, you know, a lot of goalies need to wear them. Finally, we need to throw all that in a bag. If you don't have a bag, um, you know, get, get a lacrosse bag. It's big. Throw all your stuff in there. You could throw in um, some of these like cedar sticks because everyone who is on this call probably understands what that lacrosse funk is all about. Uh, but make sure <clears throat> after practice, you're not just throwing that bag in a dark, damp place. Right? We're airing it out um, to let it breathe a little bit. And then you could, like I said, throw some cedar sticks in there that, that soak up some of that, some of that humidity. All right. Uh, buying tips, buying tips. So, you know, when you're starting as a uh, youth goalie, start with used gear. You know, especially if your goalie is not, if you don't know if they're going to stick with it, right? Because like I said, lacrosse goalie gear is expensive. It's a shame it is that way, but it is that way. Um, so I would always recommend starting with, with used gear because one year from now, they might want to quit goalie and you're not stuck with this thousand dollar investment of, you know, all this latest and greatest gear. Then if they stick with it, what you can do is upgrade a piece of gear, you know, start to upgrade piece by piece, uh, depending upon your budget, but maybe one item, one new item per season or something like that, right? Um, again, if you've got the money and you want to and you want to get the gear, by all means, go for it. Um, anybody use sideline swap? Sideline swap is awesome. Um, let me jump over there. I was going to give this full demo, but I feel, I feel like their site is broken now because um, I was coming up here and uh, let me refresh. So they have this lacrosse area and I can go lacrosse goalie and there's, got, there, I, there's definitely stuff. So their site's broken, so I can't give this cool demo, but um, maybe if I click one of these, it will work. Yeah, so you see like, look, sideline swap, it's essentially like eBay, but only for sports, okay? eBay only for sports. So you've got all of this used gear, um, people selling their gear, and you can find some awesome deals. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can find some awesome deals uh, on this. And the other cool thing is, let's see if we can find something that's goalie related. Um. Here, look at this. Here's a, here's a Pro 7 helmet that I mentioned um, at the beginning. 35 bucks, right? That's super cheap for a helmet if you're just getting started. And you can also do, um, you know, when you do this, I can buy it now or I can make an offer. Looks like I need to sign in to, um, to be able to do that. But you can, you can make an offer and so you can get it for a little bit cheaper sometimes. All right? So sideline swap is... Um, is an awesome alternative, assuming they get there, assuming they get this working. <laughs> uh, so I want to, I was gonna do this whole demo of trying to like build out a, uh, a gear on sideline swap, but um, we will not be able to do that, all right? Um, sometimes, let me go back to present mode here. Sometimes people ask me, well, what, if I wanna buy new gear, what order should I buy things in? And if you ask me, this is the, this is the order right here. Um, the first one is the stick. Cause I really think, you know, it's the only thing that touches the ball. You're using the stick, um, so often. And it really is like the number one thing that allows, allows us to make saves. So I always recommend you get, you know, a good stick to start with uh, second lacrosse goalie gloves, like a nice solid pair of goalie gloves. Third, like a really beefed up jock. I put chest protector as number four, because there's only five chest protectors that are now legal. Right, so if you don't have one of those, you got to get one. So maybe that needs to be number one um, on this list, uh, and then f finally the optional gear. Uh, what do you guys think about that order? You agree? Disagree? Would you change something? Let me know what you think. That's that's my opinion. Um, ultimately, again, it uh, if you can get all that gear in one go, by all means, go ahead. But if you're asking, oh, I only have money for one piece, what should I get? I'd go with the stick. All right, this is where I was going to do the sideline swap demo, but I kind of showed you that already. Um, cool, that's it. Let me stop sharing my screen. I'll get to the questions. Um, what do you guys think about that? What did you think about that? It looks like the chat was pretty pretty active. 
Um, awesome info. Awesome info. All right, cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, cool. And yeah, like I said, hopefully, you know, if you have a difference of opinion, that's great. Um, I'm not saying what, what I have here is gossip poll, but hopefully that is good information. I see 16 questions and we'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, is there a difference between girl and guy goalie gear? I think I touched on that. Um, not much, not much, maybe just the sizes I'm trying to think. Yeah, probably just the sizes. Uh, good question. Nicole, is there a way to prevent goalies from overheating in gear? It was 85 in Phoenix today and only getting hotter. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Drink a lot of water. Um, I know, I know a lot of goalies uh, have the opposite problem playing in the Northwest and they, they get super cold. And what they do is they put those little um, heating pads like in their gloves and their feet, those like ones for skiers. Um, I don't know of any good ways to over, to prevent overheating besides, uh, you know, making sure you're, you're super, super hydrated. All right. Avery says, we spent any time talking about the new chest pad restrictions. Yeah, I did. There used to be the, um, there used to be a chest pad specifically made for women, uh, the Sultra, but, um, it's not certified yet. So I don't know what the deal is if they're going to or not. Uh, but those chest pads that I, uh, put right there are really the, the only ones that are, um, available right now. All right. Um, what about a hockey goalie throat guard says Alistair, uh, you know, by rule, there's literally a rule in there that says that the lacrosse, that the throat protector needs to be made for lacrosse. But if you look at, I mean, if you look at, um, if you basically what I'm saying is if you use an ice hockey one, I don't think anybody's going to say anything. And in fact, if you look at this warrior one, hang on, let me bring up, let me share my screen again. I'll show you guys. This one, like you look at this warrior one. I mean, this is very ice hockey, very ice hockey ish, right? So who's to say? So um, technically by rule, you have to use a lacrosse one, but if you have any throat guard on there, I, I don't think any referee is going to say that. I really don't, or really is going to say anything. Uh, do you have a recommendation slash heard good things for female goalies for chest pads? Um, I don't with the new ones. I've heard good things about that warrior nemesis pro the black one. I've heard really good things about that, um, for, for women, but, uh, curious, any girls out there have a recommendation for a chest pad, one that you're using that you really like, um, throw it in the chat. Let's hear it. All right. Um, Mark says, is there a new certified women's chest protector? Look, those five as of right now are the, are the, are the certified chest pads. There's a company that makes, um, there's a company that makes like chest pads that are specifically, you know, for, to prevent commotion cordis and they're not even certified. I don't know what's going on with them yet. Um, what is the name of it? Now the name is escaping me. Um, I've seen it. It's like a, it's a unequal, unequal. Does that sound right? Um, it is a, uh, like a green looking chest pad, unequal lacrosse chest protector. Yeah. Unequal. Um, anyway, they're like, their whole company is about preventing, <laughs> preventing heart problems and they're not certified. So I have no idea what's going on there, but as of right now, there are five chest protectors that are certified. Um, so I don't know, like if you ask me, there's pros and cons to it. Like, yeah, we want to be safe. We want to prevent potentially like deadly problems, of course, but now everyone's got to go out and buy a new hundred dollar, hundred twenty dollar chest protector. It's kind of, kind of a shame. All right. Uh, do you cut the palms out like some field players for the gloves? Um, no, I think it's illegal. I don't think you're allowed to do that in, in the pros. I think you can legally do it. Uh, if you use them enough, you know, you'll start to develop some little holes. At least mine did. I don't know about goalie gloves nowadays. Like I said, I got the Maverick Max Pros and I've only used them for a little bit and they're, they're fine, but I don't know. I think it's comfortable enough with the, with the suede. 
Um, Alistair, I know we already passed this, but the Warrior Maverick Chest Protector Non-Pro. I, I don't, uh, listen, the, as of my understanding, those five that I showed you are the five certified. So when and if more get certified, um, I'll let you know. But as of right now, if it's not on that list, like it's not certified. Uh, what about heads that only have one drill hole? Do folks drill a second one? Good question. That's an interesting question. Um, you can see the STX Eclipse original just has one. I don't know if that's in focus. One, maybe I have to move my head. That has one drill hole right there. Whereas the Eclipse 2 has, has two. Um, and I only have one screw in there, but it just provides a little more stability. So I don't know. I always, I played my entire collegiate career with one screw. And then I would put a little bit of tape right here that kind of, um, that kind of attached. And this was club ball too. And I was in college and didn't have a lot of money. Uh, so at one point my, my shaft broke. And the only thing I had to connect the shaft to the, uh, to the head was tape. So I actually, the tape was holding it on. So um, if it only has one hole, I'd say just go with that. I've never heard of drilling a second hole. All right, do you consider a different mesh for rain and wet conditions? Um, no, I don't. I'm a newer goalie and I don't know anything about mesh. How, I, how do I know which one I want? I only know it's a 12 diamond. Listen, you can't go wrong. You know, if you get East Coast dyes, if you get, um, you know, Mesh Dynasty makes a 12 diamond, um, String King makes a 12 diamond, you're not going to go wrong. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress. Um, I would recommend 12 diamond for beginner though. It's nice and light. Um, I, I like 12 diamond. All right. Mark says, while there are great, while there are many great stringers, I feel the best one that has seen you play and can string your stick according to your skills and abilities, i.e. low clears, keeping the ball in the channel after a save. What are your feelings? Yeah, there's different ways to string ahead, and the best stick stringers will ask you how you want it. Um, that's what Mr. Wonderful does. You know, he asks you, you know, how you want it. So absolutely, I do think that there are different ways to string ahead, depending on how you play. Um, and yeah. You know, when you contact somebody on Instagram, ask them for the options. And um, yeah, good question. Alexa says, what's your opinion on shin guards? I think I shared my opinion. So maybe um, that was asked before uh, I talked all about that, but I am strongly in favor of them. And to all goalies, you know, who say, oh, this, oh, that, oh, this, oh, that, and, and have excuses. I don't buy any of the excuses. Um, I think that you absolutely should be wearing shin guards, um, especially in practice. Again, if you want to take them off in the game, I have no problem with that. Um, but I'm for shin guards. I know some goalies will tell you they're not. In fact, uh, who do we have on Liz Hogan? Someone asked her about shin guards and she said, you know what? I'm probably not the right person to do this because I don't like them. Um, I don't like them. I, I, I don't use them. And I was like, Ugh, well, I totally disagree. So there you go. All right. Um, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, I, I feel like the biggest reason that goalies don't want to wear shin guards is because of tradition and, you know, getting, getting heckled, right. Getting heckled by the other players, in which case throw some, throw some sweatpants over it if you want. Um, in which case, tell them to get in goal and take one off the shins. And then we'll talk. All right. All right. Uh, Kenzie says, I have these squishy shine guards. Should I get harder ones? Yeah, I think you should. Um, right. Like, you know, you want like a hard, a hard, uh, shin guard. I don't know. Squishy doesn't really work for me. That's why I said, I don't feel like, I don't feel like any, um, lacrosse company has nailed the shin guard just yet, but, uh, there you go. That's my opinion on that one. Coach, how do you suggest taping a goalie shaft? Ooh, good question. Um, at a bare minimum, I want a piece of tape where, where you keep your bottom hand, okay? Right, so, so then I know in my, in my setup, I can, I can get there every single time, all right? So at a bare minimum, uh, tape on the bottom hand. 
I also like to, I don't have it on this stick, but when I played, I like to have a piece of tape on the top hand where my, uh, where my, where, where on the top part where my top hand went. And then um, I put some tape on the bottom like that. So just basically then when I'm playing, I have you know this setup where I'm going to make saves, two pieces of tape right there. And then this is a, a like a, this is the STX outlet. So on this, on this one where I would outlet would be kind of right here. So I basically have those two positions and that's where I recommend tape. And some people get a little more extravagant with it and want to do more tape options, but at a bare minimum, you know, wherever you're going to touch the, the stick, I want, I want a little bit of tape there because the tape, especially in wet weather conditions has a much stronger feel, right? A much better feel. I get a much better grip on the shaft with the tape. So um, that's how I suggest taping it. Not too much tape, right? I don't know where, I don't want to add a lot of weight to it, uh, but there you go. Do girls really need a jock? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Do they? What happens if you get hit there? Wouldn't that hurt? Uh, I'm not an anatomy expert, but um, Avery says she does not use one. It's built into some pants. Marie says she does not use one. Oh, they were a Jill, not a jock, a Jill. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So there you go. Uh, is it legal to have a Lexi shield on during gameplay? It is not. It is not, unfortunately. I know the folks at Lex Lexi Shield are trying to work with the rules committee to make it legal, um, but uh, it is not legal. So you'd have to take it, unscrew it, and take it off during gameplay. Okay. All right. Um, Xavier says, "Can you use an ice hockey player?" I think there's a missing word there. Can you use an ice hockey player to do what? <laughs> Maybe an ice hockey player throat guard, which uh, Alistair always uh, already asked. Um, already asked. All right. Are you going to start a lax goalie equipment company for padded cleats, uh, lax goalie tailored leg and arm pads, et cetera? Oh, man. That is an interesting question. So I'll let you guys in on a little secret. I actually have a patent for lacrosse goalie pants that I want to get, uh, that I want to get created and it would be unlike anything that's that's out there because it'd be a full length pant right and um it would have like the all the built-in padding that we need but nothing that nothing that you don't it would have like you know removable shins so if you want the shin guards you, you take them out it would have calf protection who who's been hit in the calf oh my goodness um the worst part about getting hit in the calf is the ball usually goes in <laughs> So here you get stung with this 90 mile an hour shot in the calf uh, and it goes in. So it would kind of wrap around and then, yeah, knee and thigh protection, but nothing on the outside, um, a little bit on the inside. Cause sometimes when you step like the inner part of your leg gets, um, gets the inner part of your leg gets exposed and then maybe a little bit on like the hips, but then you would also wear a cup. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't have any groin protection. Uh, anyway, I got the patent for that. So we'll see if I can, I have no idea how to make gear next, next step in the process. Huh? Uh, but good question. Yeah. Maybe one day, maybe one day right now. Um, I've been focusing on the training, but, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right. Alistair says, but on your blog post, you said, so I don't know what that means. Um, and some of the blog posts, I'll be honest, I wrote, I wrote them five years ago and uh, my, my opinion has changed. Uh, there's some articles I've gone back and edited, but sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I, uh, you know, as I learn in this position and talk to so many goalies, I change. So I don't know what you're referring to there, but there could be something. Um, so there you go. All right. Um, as Xavier said, sorry, an ice hockey player glove. Uh, I don't think they have that thumb protection. Do they? ice hockey player gloves. So yeah, you can absolutely use them, but, um, yeah. Um, for the, for the chest protector says Alistair. Okay. I'll go back and update that. There's five. There's five. Um, is it true? I'm calling the pants, the Daminator, <laughs> the Daminators. You got your Daminators on. That sounds good. That's got a good ring to it. Doesn't it? Well, good thing I was wearing my Daminators. 
I, I'm, I'm envisioning this commercial, right? Where you got like a, a lacrosse goalie. He's just taking like shots to the legs and the, and the shins and like, he's not reacting at all. And like, then his, his friends come up and say, like, dude, what's, what's been going on with you? And he kind of like lifts up his pant leg and he's like, Daminators, have you heard about them? What do you think? The Dominators, Daminators. Um, there you go. I love it. Uh, what do you think about thumb protection that gets added on top of the glove? Interesting. Um, you know, if you're using the lacrosse goalie, uh, if you're using the lacrosse goalie gloves, I think that provides quite a bit of protection. Um, so I don't think you need any additional protection. I've seen, you know, back in the day when we didn't have the lacrosse goalie gloves, you would see goalies like, MacGyver these gloves, right? And they'd put like a thumb protector on, there'd be a bunch of tape and it'd be like this huge thick thing. Um, so you can absolutely do it. There's no, you know, nothing to say you can't, um, you can't do it. But um, yeah, I mean, I think those lacrosse goalie gloves uh, provide quite a bit of protection. All right, everyone's in on the commercial. Everyone's in on the commercial for the Daminator. So Alistair, uh, thank you, Liam, whoever said they'll do, uh, yeah. Avery, if you want, want a commercial on the Daminators, I'll gladly help. All right, Daminators, you're here to hear first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. All right, um, that does it with the questions. What other questions do you guys have? I wanna say uh, thank you so much for attending. I mean, some of you attended all these sessions Awesome. Awesome stuff. Um, I had a ton of fun. I hope you did too. I hope you learned some things. I hope you feel pumped to play lacrosse goalie. Um, and just thank you for all your guys support in this. It's, um, it's actually a lot of work to put on, but when I get your messages that like, Hey, you know, I saw this session with so-and-so I tried it out in the field. Um, and it made such a difference and thank you so much for, uh, for, for putting this on, that really means a lot to me. So I, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart when you send those messages, send me pictures of your notes. The next summit is going to be uh, the, in the summertime. So we're gonna do it June. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do four summits a year. What do you guys think about that? Four a year. So this was just number one. Um, so we're gonna do it every, uh, every three months. We're gonna do it. So the next one will be in June or July around the summertime. Uh, line up the speakers for that. Uh, and thank you guys so much for, uh, for those of you that bought the VIP pass. Um, in uh, November of 2020, I stopped working at my job to do Lax Goalie Rat full time. And that's, it's just, you know, every day that I get to work up, wake up and, and, and work with you guys and, um, you know, talk lacrosse goalie um, is just, it is awesome. It is awesome. But as a result, like I need to make some money. <laughs> uh, I need to make a living, need to support the family. So anyone who uh, bought the VIP pass, you know, thank you so much for that support. It was amazing. Um, so stay tuned. I got some things coming. Uh, not the Daminators. The Daminators is not, is not the, uh, is not the next project I'm working on. The next project I'm working on is going to be, uh, ooh, do I want to reveal it right now? Do I want to reveal it right now? We'll see. Let me ask you this. What is the number one thing lacrosse goalies struggle with? Put that in the chat. What do you guys think it is? The number one challenge that most lacrosse goalies struggle with. Avery says mental game. Landon says mental game. Mental game, mental game. It is. It's the mental game. Um, so I'm putting together this mental game boot camp uh, that's going to be mental game training because one of the things that Justin Goldman said in this session, in this in this uh, summit, was like if 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 goalie is 90% mental, like why do we work on it 10% of the time, right? Or sometimes I talk to goalies and I say like, what is your, you know, what's your number one challenge? Oh, it's definitely the mental game. Yeah. Like what are, what do you do to work that? Nothing, right? Nothing. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of challenges out there, but by, by far, 
what people are telling me and what I know to be true based on my own experience is the mental game. Uh, so it's going to be a two week mental training boot camp. I'm super excited about it. The, the way it works is each day you get a lesson from me and then a challenge, right? A lesson from me talking about a particular mental thing that's going to help your mental game and then a challenge. And you go out and you do that challenge and you get one video per day for two weeks. We're going to meet on Fridays two times and answer questions and kind of go through it together. It'll be all like, it's all virtual, right? It'll be all online. Um, and we'll do it in two weeks. And, um, you know, are you going to be a mental game expert after this? Probably not. Like it takes more than two weeks to do it, but is this like a great way to train your mental game? Yeah. Like when you get into the gym two weeks later, are you a bodybuilder? No. Like when you start playing lacrosse go two weeks later, are you uh, an expert? No, but like, you're going to get, you're going to take the steps forward and you're going to start working at it. And you're going to have these exercises that you can, that you can continue to use and really just, just habits uh, as well. So everything will be online. Um, I'll be revealing that next week. I'm probably going to limit the number of spots. We'll see. Cause I want to make it, you know, a little bit smaller. It is going to be paid. Um, it is going to be paid. Like I said, I'm trying to make a living, but anyway, hopefully that excites you. I know I'm really excited about it. Uh, can't wait to teach you guys that stuff. Um, what else? What else? Oh, Brad asks, is Matt DeLuca still doing a webinar? Yeah, I mentioned that at the beginning. We, we owe you one. We're going to do that sometime next week. Um, I need to uh, get with Matt and find a, find a time and date that works for him and for me. And once we have that, we will let you know. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending the events. That'll do it for the virtual lacrosse goalie summit three uh, next summit will be the same. I'm, I'm always going to do the summits in this model. I'm always going to do the virtual summits in this model where it's free to attend. And then if you, uh, if you can, if you want, you can buy the VIP pass. Uh, it gets you free access to all of the replays for life. Um, there's an elite VIP pass where I'm doing a coaching call on Monday. So anybody that um, ordered the elite VP, VIP pass will get an invite to that coaching call. And that's going to be cool. It's going to be an, a regular Zoom call. So I get to see all of you. And we're just going to chat and see what's on your mind, see how I can help. All right. Um, I love seeing all the names. I feel like we got a really cool goalie family here. So thank you very much to everyone for showing up, for putting in everything. Alistair on it. What about the giveaways? What about them? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. There's tons of comments. So we got a lot of potential people. I'm going to scroll, 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 stop. Gwen Shile, Shile. Scroll, 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 stop. Baru, Baru O'Neill. Scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, so those two are the Lexi Shield. The Lexi Shield. Okay. And the winner of the Swack Slacks Balls is Zoe A. Zoe A. So if I called your name, email me, Damon at laxgoldyrat.com. And um, let me know what, uh, what you won and your shipping address. And um, I think that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the Virtual Lacrosse Goalie Summit 3. Talk to you soon. Take care.